today is November 2nd, 2020. It is 5.34 p.m. and in accordance with the governor's regulations regarding, uh, or, or this meeting meets the governor's regu regulations and executive orders regarding um, virtual meetings. This is a Keisha Farms meeting, uh, committee meeting um, uh, for November 2nd, 2020. We're running about four minutes behind at 5.30. And Madam Chairperson, we do have a quorum and here is the agenda, which I will share on the screen as soon as my eyes allow me. The floor is yours. All right, perfect. Well, good evening, everyone. And um, welcome to Alex and Chad, if he's on the call. We're really excited to hear from you tonight. Um, we have a few bit, uh, items of business and I'm looking at the agenda to see where you are, but Gary, you'll tell me. So can uh, if anybody, everybody had a chance to read the minutes, Mary, thank you again for your detailed minutes. They were wonderful. Are there any um, changes or corrections to the minutes? All right, hearing none, could I have a motion to approve the minutes as submitted? I'll make the motion. Thank you, that was Mike Orsini. And can I have yes. a second? Second. Second from Paul, thank you. All right, um, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, great. So the, the minutes are approved. Um, Gary, are we gonna consider uh, the University of Hartford proposal under open issues and old business? I would, yes. Okay, great. Well, Brooke, we're really excited to hear from you and the students and even reading over the minutes got me excited for what we're here to gonna hear tonight. So take it away. Well, thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, um, again, if for those who don't know me, um, Brooke Penders, Weathersfield resident and also the executive director of the Office of Career and Professional Development at the University of Hartford. And um, we are very excited because Kevin Sweeney, who some of you met on our last um, Zoom call, has identified two spectacular students who are going to co-lead uh, the project um, with this commission and help move the project forward. Um, one of them I can see right now, Alex Serrata, um, is, is with you right here. And then Chaz Young. Chaz, are you on the line? I texted him and, and sent him an email, so he might not be or he might hop back on. Uh, but Kevin and I, most importantly, as um, uh, Chaz and Alex just recently kind of got up to speed on the project and I think are really excited about it, we wanted to give you guys an opportunity to hear from each of them what their background is, um, kind of some of their initial thoughts about the project, and then you can go ahead and feel free to ask them some questions if you'd like. So we'll start with Alex. Um, and um, so Alex. Feel free to take the floor. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Alex Serrata. Um, I'm a junior entrepreneurship major, uh, University of Hartford, Barney School of Business. Um, originally, I'm from South Jersey, right outside of Philadelphia. Um, I'm pretty familiar with Weathersfield and the area. Um, I think it's a pretty new, unique town, um, has some cool history and uh, background. And I feel that we can, uh, between me and Chaz and everyone else, we can create um, some very special, something very special at uh, Kia Farms. Um, I chose this project because where I grew up, we actually have a similar situation where we had two farms. Um, and as a child, I enjoyed going to the farms. Um, they held different events. And um, I thought that I could personally relate and that I could bring some of the things that I learned um, from school along with personal experiences um, to help the town out. Um, and finally, I, me and Chaz are just, we're very excited to begin research um, and help figure out what would be best for everyone in the community. Um, we're real excited um, and looking forward to meeting everyone. Um, Alex it was one of those kind of no-brainer choices when it came to a potential lead or co-lead for this project. Um, it took us a good 20 minutes into the meeting, first meeting them to hear about everything that they had going on. And I thought, when do you guys sleep and how do you guys manage everything that's going on, but I think those are exactly the kind of students you want on a project like this, who can take a lot of different exposure, a lot of different interests, and really kind of um, translate that into, um, I think, a good product and deliverable for the commission. Does anyone have any questions for Alex? OK, 
Okay. Um, Chaz, have you joined yet? If Chaz doesn't get on with us, what I might do is get it on a little Zoom meeting with him and have a little uh, quick little interview with him and then maybe send it out to um, you, Cynthia. And um, maybe you could pass it along to the members just so you can all get a chance to uh, see him and hear from him, hear a little bit more about him. Would that be amenable to everybody? Yeah. Yes, okay. thank you. Okay, great, great. Um, any questions about the University of Hartford's work on the project, the structure? I know the last meeting, we kind of went through a lot of the details of it. Now you kind of have seen the leads. They're going to really start digging in deep and recruiting other team members to begin uh, the deep dive into the existing RFPs and, and moving forward with um, the plan that gets us through about May. Alex, are you familiar with the timeline on the on the plan and the proposal? Um, the way it was explained to me, um, it's going to be a it was a spring internship. Um, I'm not exactly sure on the specific dates, um, but I have an ideal timeline. Okay, Kevin um, and I have not had a chance to get with Chaz and Alex in the same room quite yet. So we're hoping that after we get the election behind us, and um, we're gonna try and find some time for them to come into the career studio and for us to actually have a socially distanced meeting. All right, I was thinking ahead. We only have one more meeting this year. Yep. In, in the initial kind of laying out the proposal, we said perhaps at that last meeting of the year, which is 12-1, you would give us more or less your formal response to the RFP. Are we still able to stick with that? As a Kevin and I are committed to sticking with that, absolutely. That's terrific. That's great. Thank you. Any resources we can put in your hands, Alex, let us know. We have, you know, um, we can do Zoom calls. We have maps. We have information on the referendum and, you know, the, the selling points of the farm, the proposals that were put forward and things like that. Happy to help you. Great. Okay, Any of so that that you have would be, yeah, we would love that. We could even... Um, if you want to send that to me, I can get that to them ASAP because I believe all we have right now are the RFPs. So any backup documentation would be really helpful. So we could send the video clip from the drone so you can get an overview. <clears throat> and uh, our GIS system is online, Weathersfield Map Geo. So you could probably pinpoint the location. You can run different layers um, on it just to see so you can get an understanding of contours. Great. That'd be great. Um, I might be able to pull up some marketing or old statistical information in terms of um, you know, just population trends and statistics you might right. um, need. Chaz is having a hard time getting in. Does he by chance in the, is he in the waiting room? No? He was at one point, but let me check. Hold on. Okay. Let me see if maybe... Yeah, tell them to tell them to log out and try again, or I can resend the meeting notice to them. Okay. Give it one quick shot there and see. Um, I've never actually walked the property. Is that possible? Oh, here's Chaz. Hold on. Uh, yes, it is. Um, just uh, obviously, be careful where you walk, where you step. Oh, I can just go over there and do it? Yeah. Oh, okay. We try not to publicize it. It really should be posted for um, limiting trespassing in certain areas, um, just because the ha there's certain hazards related to the, uh, or potential hazards related to it, but, um, uh, you know, close to the building. Yeah, okay. We won't get too close Our to the building. Maybe Alex, you and Chaz and I could take one of the community service vans over, socially distanced drive. Okay, that's terrific. Chaz, are you on? Oh, there you are. Hi everyone, so sorry about that. I was having, I was in another link and then it just was a bunch of confusion and I couldn't download it, but for, I'm here, I'm here. You're here. <laughs> so sorry that's, about that delay, so, so sorry. So happy it. you're here. That's okay, I, we're just glad you're here. We have all experienced Zoom challenges over the past few months. So Alex has already introduced himself to um, the commission and I would love for you to share a little bit about yourself and um, why you're interested in co-leading this project. 
Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So good evening, everyone. My name is Chaz Nathaniel Young. I'm originally from New York City, and I'm a junior student here at the University of Hartford. I'm majoring in economics, political science, and communication with honors. I'm also studying three different minors, as well as have two major concentrations under my belt, as well as I'm also interested well, let me just say this. I'm interested in joining this particular project because based off my studies, it gives me a chance to really put all three of my majors to the test and to really see what I can do. I've also have experience working within the Manhattan, the Brooklyn, and the Suffolk County District Attorney's offices. I've worked with the Mayor's Office of New York City for a few years to combat domestic violence, as well as have successfully completed an internship with iHeartMedia just this past winter. And prior to COVID-19, I was also recently selected to intern with the MTA which is one of my biggest dreams to work within the transit system. But all those experiences were very different. However, at the same time, they have all prepared me to take on all the challenges and to rise to the occasions in all the career fields that I choose to be involved in, like this particular project. So I'm very happy and excited to be a part of this. I can't wait to work with all of you to find out more about the project. And I can't wait to see what this learning experience is going to be for both myself and Alex. So thank you for giving me the opportunity. I'm very happy to be a part of it. Great. Chaz is the first email I ever got that talked about his passion for transportation. <laughs> Lots of other things that comes across my desk, but this was the first one I got <laughs> for transportation. So um, we're really excited. Um, you obviously in, in these co-leads are getting students with a lot of capacity, um, a propensity to give it their all. And I think um, just a, a desire to lead a group of people to really deliver for our town. So. Um, any questions for Chaz? Do you sleep? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I do. I get an average, most nights I get an average of roughly five to six hours of sleep. But for the most part, I was able to, I have good time management skills and I'm able to have good organization. So it's just about planning, but I get a lot of sleep on the weekends. Sometimes I sleep to like nine, 10 o'clock, but for the most part, I get enough sleep. <laughs> I'm learning, I'm learning how to manage it very well. <laughs> Well, we're really happy to have you on board. And I got excited. I wrote down economics, political science, and communications, communicating to the people. You're going to have to use all of those skills on this project. <laughs> yes, thank you. Alex's entrepreneurship, we seem like we've got the, the right mix. It's going to take everything we've got to try and you know, present this to our community and get their feedback so that we can move forward in a way that, that really brings people together on this, makes them really excited about it. So thanks for joining us. No, thank you. Um, Chaz, I'll be in touch. I just shared and, and got permission from Gary um, to go over to actually walk the site a little. So maybe you and Alex and I can talk tomorrow about finding some time to do that here in the very near future. Okay. Sure. Absolutely. Sounds Great. good. If there aren't any other questions, we'll leave you all to the rest of your business. Alex, Chaz, any comments or questions for the crew? No, just really looking forward to uh, get started uh, real soon. All right. Me too. Same here. Thank all you for right. the opportunity. Can't wait. Gary, I'll connect with you about all those materials and some other things that we might need to grab from you. And um, yeah, we're, we're committed to delivering something at that first meeting in December. Thank you very much. And I'll be happy to walk with you too, if you feel- Oh, like great. I would love that. I'll be in touch. Me, I'll walk with you, so. Great, I would like that. Okay. Yeah, I'll be same here. I live right across the street, so loop in. Oh, yeah. Good. Terrific. We'll try and do that real soon here. We'll try, try, to, tomorrow, try right? to do it before it snows again. Yeah, We've, uh, we have been out there in the snow before. It's not as fun. <laughs> okay, we'll try and do that real soon then. Thank you everybody for your time. Um, looking forward to seeing you and uh, having something for you in December. I'm here. Got it. Alex and Chaz, thank you very much for uh, for stepping forward to do this. It's um, it'll certainly be a test of your skills and a challenge, but it sounds like you guys would be up for the task. Uh, Othersfield is a great community, and we look forward to the. Uh, potential that you see in it as an outsider looking in um, and using the knowledge and skills that you've learned at school and kind of applying them here. I think we're all kind of excited to see which direction it may lead. Right. Uh, so, Chaz thanks. and Alex, Gary is an alum. He, he's a hawk. I'm not going to tell you what year, but if you look through the sports center, you could probably <laughs> find me if they still do the wall with all the sports people on it. Just yeah. keep looking, you'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's still there. It's still there. <laughs> All righty. Thanks, everyone. Have a great week. Thank, Thank you for your time. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. All right. Okay. Any comments or questions about them?
Mike, you weren't at the last meeting. Do you kind of have a sense of what we're doing? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. The kids, I mean, the kids look ambitious, so let them go. Yeah. No, so. I, your enthusiasm was palpable, wasn't it? It made me feel like yeah. I didn't go back to college. I didn't take enough majors. I <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Underachiever. Was, yeah, that was great. That really was. And, you know, Mary's minutes have all the phases that they described, you know, detailed perfectly. So that's why I asked them, are you going to be able to stick to that time schedule? And her, you know, Brooke was positive that they were going to do it. So that really will work with us, too, you know, going forward. So. All right. What's next? All right. Next item on the agenda. I think I left them relatively um, open because it's not a special meeting. We don't have to uh specifically state um so that would be it i think for old business i think that was the only uh major component so uh if there's no other old business that anyone can think about new business would be the next category okay does anyone have anything to share in, with new business um dan you want to talk about park and rec at all yeah um the last park board meeting i had uh Cindy do a, a quick presentation on, on what was going on with the farm. And um, you know, she gave a little more details than I was giving, which is good. Uh, and then the park board you know, received it very positively. And then we started talking about some of the things that we get and how we get volunteers to do some of the things. Um, so what happens with the park board is someone usually comes to Kathy or one of us and says, I, I want to do something for the betterment of the town. They'll have an, an idea. So for instance, um, the pavilion, let me give you the pavilion at Millwoods. That was done by, uh, you know, a, a group. Um, and um, th there's a father that wanted to pay, um, what about, uh, res um, not respect, he wanted to pay something for his daughter, like dedicate something for his daughter. That was George Nagos. Yes. And it, of course, the original proposal was they wanted a water park. Water park, yes. So, a water park at Millwood would cost like a million dollars and you have to maintain it. And so, uh, you know, Kathy talked to them and said, well, you know, if you really want to do a water park, we've got a pavilion on the master plan. And they thought about it and they said, well, that's something that we can do. Um, so that's kind of what we do is if somebody comes to us, we'll help direct uh, them to, you know, if we got a plan, we can direct them to say, you know, we don't have that, but what about trying this? Would you like to do that? And then, um, you know, there's certain want people that we go to all the time, the Boy Scouts, we go to a lot. And uh, we got a few contacts there that I uh, have forwarded to Cindy, that they may be interested in helping out with, with the uh, greenhouses and those types of things. But it's nice because there's not a lot of money involved. It's volunteer work and uh, everything still gets done. I mean, uh, we talked a little bit about, um, there's a bridge now that another group is building in the softball fields, field one and field two. When you think, oh, it's a bridge, what's that cost, a wooden bridge? Well, it's gonna cost about $120,000. And they've been fundraising themselves. And I think they have over $100,000 already, it's taken five years. But that was on the master plan. They did it themselves and we're getting close to hopefully please God in the next few months, they'll have most of the money, if not all of it. And then they'll start plans for doing the, the bridge. But it's it's that type of thing. And that's what I wanted to see, have Cindy see. That's kind of how we do it. Nothing is really done quickly. It's done, uh, you know, when the community gets involved and does something and then maybe the town will throw it on money in afterwards. Or, um, so. So that's it. That, that's kind of the summary of what happened. You know, and it was really, I'm so happy that you invited me there. Everything we do kind of refines our sensibility about what we're doing here. So I had some real strong takeaways from that, just talking to the people and listening to you. Um, first of all, we need a master plan. That's why what we're hearing mm -hmm. tonight is yeah. so critical moving forward. I mean, long after this committee's gone, that master plan can exist for people to work towards and implement. The second thing was is that outside fundraising is perfectly acceptable in the community and seeing people raising money gives us ideas how we might do a friends of the farm 
you know, at some point, allowing people who support the idea and the mission to contribute in some way consistent with the master plan. And then it was really great to hear the volunteer of support, whether it was Kathy Bagley or the Boy Scout leaders and Girl Scouts, I guess you mentioned too, but yeah. you know, the fact that they would be willing to step up and help in some capacity, you know, made a difference. For this community, for our little committee tonight, one of the things that struck me was somebody said, where are you guys and what are you doing? We never hear anything about the farm. So that's something we should think about. I mean, if people think nothing's happening here and nothing's going on and that, you know, the farm is falling apart or not being utilized and it's just a drag on the town and community, then I think that we will have, we'll lose community faith. So we should think about that. That was important. When one of the members asked about that, it struck me that we just haven't had enough time. I mean, we've, we've done a lot in the meetings that we've had, but we don't meet that often. And it's, it, like you say, things move very slowly. So those mm -hmm. Well, the other thing is, sorry. The other thing too, is in the, to our defense, you have to remember with everything going on, it kind of really we had to pump the brakes a little too, just just meeting wise. You know what I mean? I mean, we we had a full head of steam, and then this happened, and you know, last year at this time we we were singing a different tune too. So, and, and I I understand exactly what you're saying because people have asked me, you know, what's going on with it, but you know, there's there's. Hard to move forward when every time you turn around, something's blocked. And, you know, now we're supposedly going into round two of, of the COVID thing. So, you know, it, it, it's a lot. But I, I, I understand what you're saying and, and, and respect that. But, you know, we just, we, you know, we move forward now and we do as much as we can with it. Um, you know, the, uh, you know, the, 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 the land's still there. I mean, one of the things is that, you know, it, it's, uh, you could tell that, you know, Kids now explore it. Um, you know, every once in a while you see bikes on the side of the road and they're up at the barn or wh whatever it is that they're doing. So at some point, I mean, you know, I don't know whether Gary may want to figure about maybe just putting plywood on those windows or doing something. But, you know, as, as for the, 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 the farm part and back of the thing, no one goes down there. That's, that's done. But that's, you know, that's all I got, got about that just from living across the street from it. And the good news is right now we do have someone who's maintaining, who's out on the property. Um, although as the weather changes, he won't be out there as much, but at least we have a second set of eyes yeah. and he's out there in the backfield. Um, so yeah, I do. And Mike, thanks for pointing that out. We did, we did start with a full head of steam. Um, I think a combination of COVID and some other barriers kind of just slowed things down. Uh, we did get out of the gate, I thought, fairly well in terms of narrowing it down to a um, uh, consultants. And I do want to just kind of congratulate the group here for being able to turn on a dime, even though we found out that funding wasn't coming our way. I think we came up with a pretty decent solution, and I'm glad we were able to get at least two of the students on today to talk a little bit um, to see where we can lead. Hopefully, that allows us to move forward into the into 2021 with a kind of getting back on track. And I think we have to respect what's going on. I mean, there are certain- Oh, things, no question. Yeah, there are certain things we can do. For example, set up some kind of Facebook page and just talk about what we're doing. Put our minutes, put a link to our minutes on there and you know, let people see the drone video and you know, talk to them even, even to announce that the University of Hartford, if in fact, you have a you know a memorandum of understanding with them and they're coming on board, you know to see two excited kids like that. I mean I think that makes the whole community feel that there's a possibility there. So there are sure. some things, Mike. I think you're right. We we had to be real realistic about what was going on there. But there's things we can do to let the the people know that we are actively working on it. It's it's on the back burner, but it's still simmering. So yeah. And, and and in fairness to that, I mean, we also got a number two. I mean, we, we, we did get a couple of roadblocks and it, it's going to happen. But I think once once we have a game plan here and, and like Dan, Dan said, I mean, with the master plan, I mean, so many things that happen in no woods. I mean, Dan, stop me if I'm wrong, but that master plan started in what, 93, 94? Was it around there? Oh, yeah, it's at least at least 20 years old. All of that. But when you look... And it's funny because I'm trying to find it. 
and I'm sure you have one, Dan, of one of the original layouts of what it was originally supposed to look like, the original game plan back in, in 94. And then you, I think I, I've got one from like 2010 when they had redone it. And a lot of things have changed because, you know, the majority of people need vision. They have to see something. And, you know, like, like Dan said, you know, the, uh, with the pavilion and, and, you know, I, I, had, I, had, I was involved in it. I was a part of that committee. And I remember the conversation because I was in on that with Kathy. Because, again, the water park was three, dollars $400,000 for something that you can only use three months out of the year. And that was one of the things. But that's no different than the dog park or, you know, other, other parts of it. So that's why I'm a firm believer in, you know, we have, to, we have to have something to go by. Not only do we need something to go by, it's something to go by visually. But, you know, you – from people that I've talked to, some people say, well, why spend the money for it? Well, in order to move forward here, we have to put something forward. We have to show the community something. And to Cindy's point, yes, we want to feed the community just to let them see that we are doing something forward. And, you know, like anything, it takes time and takes money. So, you know, sometimes you don't have both things at the same point. But other than that, that's I, I, I agree with it, and I, I'm, I'm excited to move forward with it. And I think the, the the kids the kids seem ambitious, and and I think it, it, it'll work out good. Well, I and mean, just one other thing I wanted to say too is it's not only important of what is on the master plan, but it's also important what's not on there. And when I say that, yeah. there's, there's you're going to see a lot of space. So, for instance, um, on the master plan, the dog park was not on the master plan, but by having master plan, we knew where the space was when they came to us. The bocce courts were not on the master plan. When Unico came to us and said they wanted to put bocce courts in, we said, oh, wait a minute, we have some space back here. Is that good for you? And they actually walked the property with them and they said, oh, no, this, will, this is a good space. So it's not only what is on there, it's the fact that you know you have space for certain things that you didn't even think of you know, when we were doing the plan. So that's the most important thing we can do is get our plan on there have kind of an idea of what we want and then at least have an understanding. Somebody else comes to us with something, um, you know, say, go ahead. If everybody agrees to it, you go ahead. Now, just, just, just one follow-up and just cause I wasn't, I wasn't at the last meeting when, when they go to do this, when they go to do the layout and stuff like that, are, is our involvement in that? Are we going to give them some suggestions or they're just going to, tackle it themselves and, and approach us. And I guess that's in Hartford? The question. Yeah, I mean, I, I, do you want me to, I can jump Go ahead. On. Yeah, oh, the, I mean, I, I think how, I kind of saw this very similar to how we were gonna approach it with a consultant. I don't think anything should be done in a vacuum. I think okay. we, should be, we should be leading them. Okay. Um, or, you know, I guess they could lead us in the dialogue, but we, you know, this committee has a role and I, I still think you need a community engagement. Mm -hmm. um, how we approach it, I think, is a little bit different. I think COVID adds some challenge to that, right? How do you get the residents uh, and no question. And the community still engaged? But I, I, I see this being very similar. We just have to figure out how we communicate mm -hmm. uh, to the broader group. And I think, um, you know, to Cindy's point, I think Mary might have said it too. But I apologize if I'm if I'm misquoting. A lot of it has to do the marketing around it. Um, while we were just while you guys were talking, I was just drafting an email to Kevin Sweeney to see if we could get the MOU memorialized and in place because um, I know that's being held up. It'll be held up between the attorneys. So um, I think before we can start doing a hard communication and say we've brought on the University of Hartford to do X, Y, and Z, I need to make sure University of Hartford is being brought on to do X, Y, and Z. Um, and, and any dollar associated with it, because I know I'm going to get pinned on a lot of questions. Um, and I'll send that out to Kevin. I do think, and um, Mike Emmett was trying to hook us up with, though I've forgotten her name, someone at the high school to do some marketing, to help have their students do some marketing. Um, and then a number of COVID cases hit over the last two, three weeks that have literally just pushed us off every, okay, in three days, okay, in three days, okay, in three days, um, just because everybody's scrambling before a shutdown. Um, I may, 
if that's going to be the case, it might make sense for us to turn back to the University of Hartford on the Mac on on the uh, marketing component and hit up their illustration program, which has been discussed before. I would like to try to give some of our high school students that opportunity to create the, the uplink or the upline to um, professional. But I but I do think, Mike, to kind of get back to your question, um, I, I, I see this still as a full um, <clears throat> connection to the community mm -hmm. and not done in a vacuum. No, it's fine. No, no, no. I, I agree. I agree. And I think they said as part of their proposal that the between January and March, that's when that initial community feedback and getting a sense of what the community wants to do and getting their engagement was what they had slated, the yeah. University of Hartford, so. Yeah. They, were, they were coming back with a timeline for us, which yeah. um, we had a, a delay on our end, on the town's end, getting them the previous proposals that yeah. were ripped apart, and that's what Brooke was alluding to today, and I think they're still committed for December. Um, okay. Anything Anything else I should add in that quick email about the MOU, the who, what, where, when, and how much um, that you want me to kind of just nudge them about? Not that I can think of. I mean, I don't know if we want to say up front some of the things we're, we're hoping for like the idea of a, of a long-term master plan or that they will reach out to stakeholders as well as townspeople and find a variety of different ways to get info. I don't know how, how that, that should be, that should be in the proposal. Okay. Um, because that was in our initial RFP. So I'm, I'm assuming they're going to mimic that, but we'll obviously whatever we get back. Um, the way the MOU would read at this point is kind of like would be referencing their proposal. Um, this is just more of a reminder, like, hey, for the next meeting, could you give this to me so that we can announce we've brought on the University of Hartford to do, you know, perform certain services uh, based off of the RFP, um, and then start to build for people who are, you know, for residents who want to be a part of the, make sure they receive the communication. Please go to our Facebook page. Please email and I'm making this up, Keisha Farms at weathersfield.ct.gov or at ct.gov to make sure that you um, subscribe or get access to all of the information. So Gary, the I know Cindy, the Facebook page, I think we are really waiting on the MOU, right? Is that what? Yeah. We're waiting to be given the go ahead that it's okay to start okay. you know, putting that, uh, that information up. Maybe even thinking January 1st. I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense to start right then and there with that year, and then we'd have something to actually put on there. Does mm -hmm. anyone object to being on the Facebook page? Your names, not anything else, but names. Okay. Yeah, so that's what I was thinking, Mary, and, and okay. the committee that, you know, this would give us some time to decide what we want to put on it and run it all by Gary, see, you know, what, what we can do um, and what we can't do. And not have it be a comment page necessarily. I mean, maybe disabled comments, just make it informational for people. Yeah, it's a good idea. Hey, Gary, is there a timeline for 2021 that, so I know Parks and Recs comes forward with a capital plan recommendation and I'm sure the physical services does as well. Do we have a timeline of when we could potentially influence what's, gets put on those based on the work that we're doing? So we'll start the CIP process in January. Uh, the first meeting, the cutoff to get onto the CIP is like the first week in January, plus or minus. And then the first CIP meeting is until the, I wanna say the 20, I don't know if I'll get that far. I wanna say the 28th, thereabouts is the first meeting, 27th. Um, uh, so you're, you're probably, depending upon what you want to put on the CIP, it might be too early because I think the plan will drive what you're mm -hmm. going to look for to, to allocate funds towards. 
unless you had something specific in mind you wanted to start putting money away for which you wanted to start putting money away? No, I, I just know um, I was just trying to overlay the work that we're going to do with the University of Hartford or even Mike's recommendation about securing the structure. I don't know if that's the type of stuff that we would want to put so we could ensure that, you know, I don't know if there's drainage work or if there's some infrastructure work that we want to consider or how much of the plan we need to know ahead of time. Just off the top of my head, what you just mentioned in terms of tying up or, or, or locking down the building is probably would be a good CIP, uh, or at least in the budget for next year and physical services budget for next year um, would probably qualify. Anything more than that, I think you're, you're asking for a, to, um, you're asking for the group to review something without having a plan, right? Yeah. So let's put drainage in. Well, what are you draining for? Um, but to secure the building cer certainly would be a, a good use of those funds. Yeah. Kathy um, Bagley comes to us in December with, I think Gary knows this, with all the projects. Yep. And then what we do is we go through all of them and there could be 20 of them and we rank them. And not that those are the ones that get done. It, it, it depends on money and everything. For instance, one of the ones we keep ranking highly is the um, parking lot at the Sullivan Wells house, which is like two hundred or three hundred thousand dollars to get that paved because it keeps flooding out. And but uh, that's been on there for twenty years, and that hasn't gotten completed yet. But that's what we do. And something probably on the farm, I think, would go through the park board if there's something they wanted. We certainly would, you know, rank that highly. Uh, you know, we have to talk about it, but uh, I think um, I think that might go to the park board, Gary. I don't know if Kathy would put it on our. If it's considered or, passive recreation, or I don't, yeah, I don't, I know. don't know. But if it did come through us, we, you know, I talked to everybody and we try to rank it as highly as we could. Yeah, there are. Uh, I will say there are a lot of needs. Uh, we typically try to keep that to 900,000. Last year it was reduced to 576,000. Um, so there's gonna be a lot of things that were pushed off. Um, but, you know, it is a town property and it, we need to consider how we maintain it. Maybe I could segue into a, a new business item from there because there was some comment similar to what Mike made. Um, I reached out, I, I sit on another committee, it's called the Weathersfield Education Foundation. And I'm just a member, I'm not, you know, in the uh, organization other than that, but they're very interested in partnering with us on the farm, and they have money. So that's why I was so encouraged by hearing Dan talk about private public partnerships that result in you know, improvements on town properties. So the thing that they're trying to do is encourage things that provide educational opportunities for kids in Wethersfield. So after the last meeting, I reached out to Paul Wagner, who I believe is the um, gentleman who you referenced, Gary, that kind of keeps an eye on things there and has done some farming. And he said that the person that um, had helped Helen and Joe Keisha was Lou Senzaro which was you know, great news for me because I know many of those, um, many of Lou's children. So Lou met me at the farm and even despite its condition, you know, he walked through the hoop house and was able to say that the thing is basically intact. I mean, it does not need, the plastic does not need to be ripped off. The two ends need to be rebuilt. He referenced a furnace or something, which he said he thought was taken out, but had been there as a source of heat. And um, when I kind of pushed a little bit on what he thought it might cost, he said he thought the whole thing could be two to three thousand dollars. I know that's something that the Education Foundation would support completely, but it has to be. I explained to him it has to come from the community process. So I think maybe down the road when we have our opportunities to voice our ideas and for, and get community input on what we're gonna do on the farm, certainly restoring that and making some kind of an educational opportunity for Highcrest kids and others, you know, would make sense. And 
this is, I spoke with Dan about this with the Boy Scouts as well. I mean, they've mm -hmm. indicated that they'd be willing to build things for the interior of the greenhouse, like the, the plant trays and things like that. Some of them are in there, so there's nice models. But it is a possibility that we already have somebody who'd be willing to provide a public-private partnership for us and provide funds for something small like that. I mean, they don't have a lot of money, but they are willing to commit that. So that may be next year, maybe 2021. We can get, um, we can see if that's something people want to move forward with. No, yeah, it's a great idea. It's a great idea. He was really supportive, Mike, which made me feel good because you know he um, he's a longtime member of the community and yeah. you know, he's excited to think that maybe his grandchildren could come over there and learn about yeah. farming and it tied in with our history and our roots. Yeah. And, you know, absolutely, absolutely. I, I was encouraged. Yeah. So that was one thing that we did follow up on from the last meeting. Good. I mean, I, I certainly think that should, that conversation be should be part of the process with uh, the, the University of Hartford students. That could probably be a short term um, goal or a short term activity, getting those back up. So even if long term, it's you know who knows what happens with that area and how you develop it. That probably could be a short-term partnership goal that could be created, especially if you've already identified a funding source yeah. for it. Okay. Well, then we'll have to find a way to communicate to that to them as they begin to start their um, visioning and their their research. I will I will also add that totally unprovoked, Mr. Sanzaro said the same thing is that we should not leave that barn unsecured. You know, he kind of walked around and looked at it and said. I guess he remembered it in much better days. He showed me where the well is and where there was a greenhouse and you know where the water pump is. And you know, he too said there's there's reasons that that should be secured. So I would really support that. However, it has to be done. You know, I would I would certainly support that as a priority item for us. Um I I don't want to feel like I'm moving the subject so we can come back to it. I completely um, Marina, Marina. Yes, Marina. Marina. Yep. Um, so her comment, I actually should bring it up. I can't remember if we shared it with the entire group from the last conversation. So I'm going to bring it up quickly. I know you had forwarded it to everyone. Where is it? There it is. So the first step is to apply, apply for a grant to write the nomination. We've missed the November deadline, it looks like, but we can apply for December. What I'm waiting for is um, clarification on whether or not we need council approval. Um, at first blush, it doesn't look like we do, but I wanna confirm that. Um, I, in general, don't like to poke my employer. Um, on projects, so I want to make sure that they're on board with what I'm doing um, and aware of what I'm doing. But um, the application, why I think it'll be okay, although I can't speak on behalf of the council, is that this is just to write a nomination. This is not to accept funding. This is not to, um, you know, be awarded. Um, it's just allowing us to apply so that someone can, so we can be nominated, or that barn can be nominated to be. Uh, added to the state uh, historic registry. And then from there, my thought is uh, at that point, maybe in December, we might need to have a presentation to council um, about what we're trying to do uh, in terms of the nomination process. Um, or we could try for the November 16th council meeting um, to do a presentation. Earlier rather than later, so you don't go through all that work and have them say they're not interested in pursuing that. I mean, because I think the nomination applying for the grant for the nomination is considerable, isn't it? A considerable amount of work? Um, I don't know the answer to that question. It didn't, it didn't look it because it looks like we have a lot of the information. Um, it's certainly Jim Woodworth gave us a, a long history mm -hmm. of the barn. Um, so I think compiling a lot of the data is already there.
So just to fill everybody in, if you didn't see this, Marina said that the barn would not qualify based on its architecture. I guess it's too new, but because it was one of the last, if, it, if in fact it was the last working dairy barn in Wethersfield, it would qualify in, in, as a criteria one in terms of agricultural history. And then Jim, as Gary mentioned, provided us with all kinds of documentation um, that it was in fact the last working dairy barn in, um, in Wethersfield. So I think that under those circumstances, it would qualify for that state designation as a structure of historic importance. I mean, I can't imagine anyone not wanting that because there are no strings attached whatsoever. It's just a, almost like an award really, a recognition, but I think we should do exactly what you say and go through all the channels. I mean, yes, thank you. I, I'm looking at, I believe this is the application. I wanna just make sure and confirm with them it is. Um, but it described the historic and current condition of the property on one or more of the continuation sheets. I, mean, I think Jim's email, I could just cut and paste and drop as the narrative. Um, it, it was very detailed, but I, um, I wanna double check that this in, is in fact the correct form um, for it. We have digital photos of it. We have maps. Yeah. So anyway, that that's kind of my thought is is to uh, is to get the council in the loop and understanding where we're going. Um, and we may need to do a presentation on November sixteenth. Um, I would see Marina at one point had said that she had no problem doing the presentation or or explaining um, the process just so that the council felt comfortable with what we were doing, um, and then we would apply for December, if so approved. Do you need us to make a motion to, to have you do that? Or are you just comfortable moving forward without it? Should it come from us or? It probably should come from the commission, from the, from the committee. Um, so that would be a good recommendation. Okay, how, should, how, how would we phrase it? I'd be happy to make the motion to ask you to, to present to the town council the possibility of applying for a grant to write a nomination for the Keisha Barn. That sounds good. Does that sound good? <laughs> Mary, that sounds that good. Sound? Read it back, please. <laughs> um, motion to present to the town council the possibility to write a grant for nomination for designation as his, uh, historic, historic build, build, yeah. Historically important building, okay. barn, historically important barn. Okay. Oh, okay, that's good. All right. Anyone any second? Any seconds? Second. Thank you, Paul seconded. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there anyone opposed to doing moving forward with this? All right, good, good. I did actually go look to it that Eleanor Buck Wolf, who is a kind of legendary name in, Weathers, in Wethersfield, did a drawing of the barn and it actually had a glass greenhouse behind it when she drew it. You know, so there's some great history that we don't even know there too. Um, and some, you know, she had a nice description of it there. So we have a lot of material that we can provide. Very good. All right, just sent something to the State Historic Preservation Office, just confirming that it is in fact the application I'm supposed to be filling out. Um, if it is, then I'll start, I'll add that to council agenda or, um, <clears throat> Uh, agenda setting just to have the conversation with uh, the mayor and deputy mayor. Great. All right. Thank you. All right. What's left? Let's see what else is on the agenda. Oh, wait, other business, next meeting, correspondence. Okay, was there any correspondence, Gary? How did we go? 
How do we go out of order? Oh, I, we didn't. Um, I didn't receive any correspondence. Okay. Um, any other business to come before the committee? Okay, I have one thing then. <laughs> I, think I do too, I'll let you go first, you're the chair. Okay, so um, I wanna recognize Jenna who was um, in Connecticut Magazine and I sent you all her recipe, but she was chosen to present a special holiday dessert. Uh, you wanna tell us a little bit about it? And there was a really nice article about Chef Jenna too. Thanks, Cindy. Yeah, I um, I don't know. The photographer for the piece kind of put the call out for chefs to kind of pitch an, an idea, a recipe for a holiday feast, and I did. And my dessert got was one of the ones that got chosen. So we got to create a holiday dinner in the middle of August, which was interesting, <laughs> and. Um, it was just a cool thing, you know. Um, I haven't seen, I, I've seen the online feature. I looked today at the grocery store because the, the print issue is supposed to be out and I couldn't find it. So I have yet to see that, but it just, it was a cool thing. So thank you, Cindy. Yeah, good for you. Good for you. No, I think it's great. I'm going to try and make it, but maybe without citrus, maybe a different fruit on the bottom. Could I do that? Yeah, why not? Yeah, have the cake. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Hello. All right, and then Jim's not here, but he and Linda were on the cover of Weathersfield Life. It, it, he's just such an advocate for the land. I mean, they planted all these trees. You know, I, I couldn't even get over how many all over the, um, the meadows and the area, the woodland and parcels that they have. So we're lucky to have you both. Thank you. Okay, that's it for me. I'll stop talking. <laughs> The other quick one is, and I apologize if we went over this in September, it's, my mind is literally, I'm starting to lose it, or October. Um, we Did we confirm, a, and now I can't remember also, you know, Brainerd Airport versus versus this group, um, Cindy. Um, we need to confirm a schedule. Did we decide to stay with 5.30, the first, 5 o'clock on the first Monday? Is that what we confirmed? Yes, we did. I, it was in... Um... Yes, we approved it. It was five o'clock. Five o'clock, effective Jan effective um, January. January. Meeting. Okay. Does that still work for you, Gary? Yep. Okay. Yep. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't losing my mind and I didn't look at the minutes again. Okay. Uh, what else? I think that's it. Okay. If there's, I don't see any, just going back. As soon as I can find the agenda. Next meeting, there's no conflicts, right, in December. Nobody here from the public? Nobody here from the public. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Good meeting. I feel like we're, you know, we're moving forward and yeah. it really all the contributions that everybody's making are going to have, I think they're going to bear fruit in 2021. We'll see something, yep. see something happen. All right. Who's making that motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion. All right, Mike, and a second? Second. All right. Thank you, Jenna. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So Aye. now I wish you all a happy Thanksgiving too. You too. You, you too. too. Bye -bye. Thank you. Safe. Be with your families and uh, enjoy it. Okay. okay. Take care. All right, bye, bye everyone. Bye, bye everyone. Bye, Gary. Bye.